Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on parameters to be more precise as parameter. For this video, I'm going to do a sum up on S parameters, and I'm also going to briefly define what are the types of S parameters. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part four series discussion on S parameters. So if you're keen to know more about parameters such as impedance, okay, which is also known as Z parameters, and also emittance, which is also known as Y parameters, I'm also going to do A, B, C, D parameters. So again, if you're keen to know all these parameters, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on parameters. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, really appreciate your strong support. Thank you so much. Let's do a very quick understanding about S parameters. S parameters are measured by sending a single frequency signal into the network or black box and detect the wave amount exit from each port. In short, over here, okay, so this is actually as a forward, okay, but let me explain. So, like what you mentioned here, S parameter is simply by measure, okay, so they actually has a source or incidence, which basically is a single frequency signal. Okay, for example, this incident wave is actually with respect to a single frequency only. So, basically, this single frequency signal is incidence into your DUT. Okay, which is also known as your network, or sometimes we call this as a black box. Okay, on the other side, what we want is basically we want to detect the wave amount that exit from each port, which means that this is an incident wave. From here, you can see that there are actually two waves that exit from the port. One, we call it a transmitted wave. Another one, we call it a reflected wave. So in short, this S parameters measure, firstly, my incident wave, Okay, and I also want to measure the wave that exit from each port. Okay, I will elaborate a little bit more on the next few slides. Power, voltage, and current, okay, they can be the incident wave, which means that this incident wave, okay, they can be either in the form of power, in the form of voltage, or in the form of current. And they may, can be considered to be in the form of wave traveling in both directions. Over here, you can see that this is an incident wave at the input port. But again, you can imagine another incident wave at the output port. So this is what you mean. They can be an incident wave traveling in both direction. Okay, so if not, you can see over here. So this is the incident wave I told you. Imagine another incident wave traveling at this arrow. Next. Okay, for a wave incidence on port 1, okay, so this is basically the incident wave on port 1, some part of this signal reflected back. Okay, so basically this is what you mean. This is, will be in red. Some part of the signal will be reflected back as illustrated from here okay, of that port and some portion of the signal exit another port, okay, which means that some of the waveform will be able to penetrate through the DUT okay, at exit at another port. S11 refer to the signal reflected at port 1. Okay, so basically this is what we call a S11. This incident wave propagate, some of them will be reflected back. Okay, basically this is what we call a S11. Okay, so like what you mentioned, S11 refer to the signal reflected at port 1. Okay, for the signal incidence at port 1. Scattering parameters S11 okay, is the ratio of two wave. B1 over A1. Okay, so basically you can see that what is S11 is simply the wave at reflected B1 over A1. So this is the definition of S11, which I have illustrated earlier on also. S21 refer to the signal 
existing at port 2 for the signal incidence at port 1. Okay, so this is an incident wave. Okay, S21 refer to the signal that exit at port 2, as what it mentioned here. So therefore, S21 is the ratio of two wave, okay, which is the B2 versus the A1. So from here, you can see that these are all incident wave at port 1. And what happened here is you can see that this will be the reflected, this will be the transmitted. Okay, next, okay, I will concentrate on the reverse. Earlier on, I have concentrated on the forward. So this part here, I will concentrate on the reverse. So it's actually very similar as what I have discussed on the forward. Okay, so from here, you can see that S22 refer to the signal exit at port 2. Okay, which means that now I incident at port 2. S22 means that the signal actually exit at port 2 for an incident signal at port 2. Scattering parameter S22 is the ratio of two wave, okay, which is B2 over A2, as you can see from here. S12 refer to the signal exit at port 1. Okay, so now this is where my incident wave. So in order to get S12, I will be measuring the signal that exit at port 1. Okay, the incident wave will be at port 2. Okay, the scattering parameters S12 is the ratio of two wave, which is the B1 over the A2. Okay, with this, I think you have a better idea how this S parameter, S11, S21, S12, and S22, the definition. Okay, again, all this I have mentioned quickly on the previous video. Okay, so if you want, again, look at the playlist in order to to have a better understanding on the S parameters. Also, I would like to say something here. So if you find this video helpful, please help and support this channel by like the video and also consider to subscribe to this channel. It is possible for signal exit at port 2 to reflect off something external to the network and re-enter the system as a second input. Okay, this will be experience its own reflection and transmission. Okay, let me make it easy for you. Okay, for example, you just imagine that okay, you actually send an incident wave into your DUT. Okay, let's say this part successfully penetrate, which is the forward coefficient. Okay, and what happened here is basically you can have some form of reflection and also some form of transmission. Imagine if I connected another external load over here. You can imagine that again, some form will be reflected back, some form will be transmitted. So basically, this is what it means here. So if we connect another external load, okay, so it can have its own experience in terms of reflection and also transmission. S parameters depends upon the network and also the characteristics impedance of the source and load used to measure it, and also the frequency that is actually measured at. So in short, okay, if the network is changed, okay, which means that I change this two-port network into another two-port network, the S parameters change. Okay, so next, if the frequency is changed, for example, instead of 2 gigahertz, I change to 1 gigahertz, okay, I actually will have a different set of S parameters, which means that S11, S12, S21, and S22, the value change with frequency. Next, if the load impedance is changed, okay, the S parameters also change, which means that I change to another value of the load. Okay, so in short, the whole S parameters will also change. If the source parameters has changed, okay, my S parameters will also change. So in short, okay, these four items, when they actually change, your S parameters will change. Your network change, your frequency of observant change, your load and source impedance change, all these will contribute to the changes of S parameters. Last but not least, I'd like to quickly discuss what are the different types of S parameters. As I illustrated earlier on, when we actually describe network with S parameters, it is usually about single frequency network, okay, which means that, for example, I actually measure a set of S parameters metrics. Okay, so this set of S parameter metrics only valid at that particular frequency. Let's say I measure at one gigahertz. 
So this set of S parameters will only vary at one gigahertz. So if I change to another frequency, this set of frequent this set of S parameters will not be relevant anymore. So this is what it means here. The trouble comes when describe the frequency conversion property, which is not possible using S parameter, which means that when I actually change to different frequency, okay, I actually cannot do it using this S parameters. Okay, let's quickly to look what are the different types of S parameters. In short, there are mainly four types. One will be the small signal S parameters. Another one will be the large signal S parameters. This will be the mixed mode S parameters. Okay, so actually I have more experience in this mixed mode S parameter. Okay, I actually done my PhD okay, doing this mixed mode S parameters. And then last but not least, this pulse S parameters. Okay, what is actually a small signal parameters? Okay, small signal S parameters are what we are talking about 99% of the time. Okay, small signal means that the signal have only near effect on the network, small enough so that gain compression or other nonlinear effect do not take place. Okay, when the signal is small, okay, so basically they are all under the linear region. So with this, we actually will minimize whatever nonlinear effect. Okay, for passive network, small signal is all you have to worry about because they act linearly at any power level. Next will be on large signal as parameters. They are actually more complicated okay, because you may drive it to, let's say, saturation, nonlinear effect. Okay, in this case, the S metric will be depending upon the input signal strength. Okay, so we need to ensure, okay, based on the input signal strength, okay, whether it's still so-called at the linear region. Okay, so let's say it go into nonlinear region. Okay, this can be undesired. So basically. Like what he mentioned, this large signal parameters we don't really deal with. For RF, mainly is still on small signal. Okay, you just imagine if you transmit a very large RF, it can be potential health hazard also. Mixed mode S parameters refer to a special case of analyzing balance circuit. Okay, so in short, mixed mode actually there is differential mode and also common mode. Okay, so hopefully I will have more time to discuss on this mixed mode. Okay, I managed to derive some of the formula on mixed modes and I hope I can share this with you soon. Okay, next, pulse S parameters. They are measured on power device so that an accurate representation is captured before the device heat up. Okay, so when actually device heat up okay, with temperature, which also play a part, Remember, temperature actually will affect noise also. So once this affects, the S parameters may also change. So therefore, this pulse S parameters, they actually want to obtain all the S parameters when the power device just initiate power on. Okay, so they want to take away the temperature effect. Okay, so with this, i like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, Thank you so much for your strong support. Thank you so much.